Okay, everybody. I hope you had a good Christmas. A very good Christmas? A Merry Christmas? Good. We're now in that confusing time between Christmas and New Year. We don't know what day of the week it is, what month it is, what year it is. Uh, wait, wait, I've, I've forgotten whether I'm Christian, Jewish, or Muslim. Okay, not that bad. But um, now that the dust has settled, I think it's worth talking about a few things that have happened in the last few weeks. I discovered that on October the 7th, there was one battalion, one battalion of soldiers, men and women of the IDF, one battalion of soldiers to defend the entire border of Gaza to Israel. That border's about 40 miles long, 36 miles, 40 miles long. If you divide a thousand, which is about, it's about a thousand soldiers in the battalion, divide a thousand by 36, you've got about 30 soldiers per mile. 30 soldiers every 1.6 kilometers. When you look at your um, track and field athletics, your, your running track, that's 400 meters. Put that into a straight line, multiply it by four, and then try and defend that with 30 soldiers when you've got three, 4,000 Hamas bloodthirsty death cult members streaming over the border committed. Um, I found out as well, on October the 7th, there were 32 battalions of soldiers in and around the West Bank. Um, that's in central Israel. And, of course, many battalions around the major cities and in the north. So the big question is, why was there only one battalion? Why was there only a 1,000 soldiers to defend the, the border when Israel, Mossad, uh, Shin Bet and the IDF all knew Everyone knew that Hamas had between 30 and 50,000 armed fanatics ready to uh, commit atrocities. You know, there's the conspiracy theory that, oh, Israel allowed this to happen on purpose. I think that's utter bullshit, insanity. I'm not going to give it another second of my time. Uh, the second point is, and this happens everywhere on earth, is that peace is very disconcerting. Peace will turn you soft. Peace is beautiful and uh, only in peace can love and comedy take place. So peace will, will uh, make you dizzy. Be peace will make you think everything's okay. And uh, whilst the Israelis were enjoying their peace, it was a holiday, I forget. The Jews love their holidays. I worked for a, a Jewish owned company for a couple of years. I did like the holidays, but anyway, joking aside, I guess the Israelis, having received zero intel about any Hamas actions, they mistook that for Hamas being peaceful. Don't forget, between 2014 and 2023, there was nine years of, of okay peace. There was a ceasefire. There was the odd rocket here and there, the odd Israeli airstrike here and there, the odd small operation here and there, but generally, peace ruined the brains of the Israelis. And they forgot that old Roman maxim. Shouldn't talk about the Romans. I know the, the Judaics have a, a bad history with the Romans. But the Romans did say, if you want peace, prepare for war. And it sounds ironic. Like, what are they talking about, prepare for war? And uh, it, it saddens me. Uh, just this week as well, we've had the, the very detailed... Um, reports of all the sexual assaults that Hamas perpetrated against men, women, and children. They even raped some of the men. And uh, that's harrowing. There's uh, the story of the CCTV footage of the lady in the black dress. I'll say no more. You all have imaginations. So, again, now that we're a few weeks in, I just want to re- reiterate and uh, recommit how I feel about it. All of Hamas have to die, every single last one of them. The people that took part in October 7th, the people that cheered them on, the people that provided houses for Hamas to keep hostages in, the, the people that cheerleaded them, the parents that uh, encouraged their children to murder Jews. They all have to go, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about total war. You're not seeing Israel carpet bomb 
the Gaza Strip with dumb bombs like the Americans did to Germany, the Americans did to Japan, like the Americans did to the Libyans, to the Iraqis. Who haven't the Americans uh, carpet bombed? One sec. They carpet bombed the Cambodians, the Vietnamese. I'm sure they've, uh, they've carpet bombed everyone, but Israel did not carpet bomb Gaza. And um, anyway, let's, let's pull ourselves out of the sexual assault carpet bombing vibe and let's uh, try and uh, bring this to a more positive note. So, can you see the black sheep? Or is he a bit far away? I'm here in the countryside outside Worley in Lancashire. It's a very blessed region of England. Yeah, it still feels quite English. And uh, if there's any trouble that kicks off around here, I know it's me starting it because uh, there's no other crazy people around here. No, there are, of course. And I, I actually saw a police car the other day, which is quite impressive. But coming back to peace and how disconcerting peace can be, only with 2020 perfect hindsight vision can you say that, oh, Israel should have had 10 battalions, 10,000 men and women of the IDF guarding the border. But that's expensive. Nobody wants to do that. You get bored. It's a holiday. I know another thing I found out as well. I hope you find this interesting. It takes between two to three hours at speed to drive down from central Israel. Let me just cover up the... Oh, one sec. It takes... One sec. Oh. Okay, the wind's gone down. So, on October the 7th, it took two or three hours for people in the central part of Israel to come down. Of course, that's if you're going in a hurry. But, of course, military units can't just mobilize in two hours. You can maybe give it two hours for all the reservists and soldiers to come away from their lunch tables and holiday tables and come and rejoin the unit and then it'll take another few hours to get everyone down there but Hamas only needed only needed a couple hours the three four thousand of them streaming over the border and once they're in the kibbutzes once they're under the the olive groves and the trees and the forests in the houses and the hedges what are you gonna do you gotta go house but house to house now a more turned on viewer, switched on viewer, will know that I'm paraphrasing a bit. I have listened to the Sam Harris podcast with um, Yuval Nahoa Harari. Y Yuval Nahoa H H Harari. He wrote Sapiens Homo Deus. He's an Israeli academic and considered uh, an intellectual. He's maybe a bit too eh, bleeding heart liberal for me, but he, he talked a lot about how Benjamin Netanyahu's partly to blame, and I can see that viewpoint as well. And Netanyahu, apparently, he's uh, in terms of defense of the country, he's put some of his friends into positions of power instead of the most competent. That is the accusation, anyway. So, I don't know. But anyway, what day is it today? Friday. How's it? How is? How is it? Friday every day. It seems like every time I podcast, I YouTube cast. It's a Friday. Every day's a weekend. Every day's a. Anyway, I do have a Manchester video as well. So uh, without further ado, this is Charlie Veach in the Worley Countryside. Thank you for watching.